showing your employees how much you value them. Show your employees how much you value them. That will help you build this culture of intentional retention. Now let's talk about showing your employees how much you value them. All right, got parts managers, parts directors in here. Raise your hand for parts, okay. Got parts gurus and parts gurus, awesome. All right, so if you were going to, what's like, what's more valuable than your parts inventory? Employees, yes, okay, fair enough, I agree. They're definitely an investment. It's, how, it's funny how uh, uh, payroll expenses on a dealer's financial statement, it kills me they call it payroll expenses. I think they should be called people investment money because that's what you're doing. Like you get an ROI out of your people, especially when you invest in them. But case in point, your employees, and there's something else too, your time. Your time is also more valuable than your parts. I mean, that's our most precious resource that we have in reality to think about. So when a leader gives their most precious resource, the gift of their time in developing their people and your people grow, now you've got a proactive plan to prevent fires from happening in the first place. And when we don't have to run around putting out fires because we've invested in our people and got a team of proactive problem solvers, what does that do for our satisfaction as a leader? If you didn't have to put out fires because your people did it for you, pretty powerful stuff. So in years of failing as a, as a manager, um, so before coaching, I call it the BC era, you can read about it in my book. <laughs> I would try to tell people what to do. I'd try to sell them on what to do. I'd try to, um, and then eventually if I got frustrated enough, I might yell at them, try to get them to do something. Not much of a yeller, but, but every time I was doing that, I was destroying and not building. But, and I would cause people to quit. And I, I, always, I always had this frustration, like I was retaining 80% of my advisors and, and sales team, but, but I had this 20% churn and it freaked me out. I'm like, how come I can keep soldiers alive in combat, but I struggle to keep a new advisor, you know, kicking butt at my store. Like, how come I have this turnover? I'm positive, I'm motivational, like, what's getting going on? <laughs> then I learned to coach and change everything. But, but all the, before that, all the people that would quit on me, I, at least I had a good enough relationship where I could be like, hey, why are you leaving? And they would be honest and tell me why. And I would get all these different reasons, and what I found was that almost all the reasons for people quitting fit into one of two buckets. It was either, um, it was either what I call success perception, so their perception of their success that they can have with my business or it was the motivation requirements. The motivation requirements weren't being met. And I started, I don't know where this came from, but I decided one day I was gonna kind of plot these things out on a graph. So I started plotting them out on a graph and that led me to creating my inspired satisfaction cultural assessment. And using this, you can predict and prevent employee turnover. And we do this for all of our coaching clients and it has a big impact on your ability to retain your people. So. When I was in the Army, I was in psychological operations, and our job was to try to influence a target audience, help meet national US or support a unit objectives. And we had a saying, perception is reality, and, and because what we found was that how the Iraqi people or the Bosnian people perceived us is how they behaved around us. So if they perceived us as saviors and we were there to help them, they showered us with gifts and they, they wanted to help us, they'd give us the information we need to save people's lives. On the other hand, if they thought we were evil and we were the enemy and we were out to get them, they didn't really like us and things didn't go so well and they might help the insurgents put roadside bombs in the room and things like that. So there's a big difference if they perceive you and our employees are no different. So, so on the success perception, the Y axis, okay? Um, you got, number one, do I have the right work? Number two, am I being treated fairly as it relates to the rest of my team? Do I have skilled coworkers that I can rely on and trust to help me get my job done? Uh, past work life, like what was my last boss like, you know, compared to my new one? What was the last job I had? You know, how much did I like it compared to this one? Um, Harvard's earnings potential. Am I able to grow my revenue and income here? Um, or, or is the potential not there? I feel like I've capped out. Uh, outside recruitment, am I being recruited by another uh, business or another dealership? Work-life balance, do I have the right work-life balance? Is my, uh, is my family happy with what I'm doing? That's a big one. Now, I'll tell you this one. When I put my dealership before my family, which I did for years as well, um, my wife was constantly trying to get me to change careers. And that wears on you. Because we as people will destroy what we resent. If we start to resent our job, we're never going to give it our all. Um, financially satisfied? Can I pay my bills today? And then what, what's the, uh, what about other industries? Can I earn more or have a better, better success perception? Have, have any of you guys lost a skilled tech or advisor? to another industry altogether, other than the carbon? Yes, okay. Where, where did they go? Oh, where is it? Oh, they were torque and Oh, you're Texas. Yeah, you got the red here, Texas. Tough, that's tough now, they make big bucks. Where, where, where'd your, yours go? Commercial sales. Commercial sales, okay. Wow. 
So yeah, these are the success perception. Then on the y-axis, you get the motivation of crimes. You know, am I valued? Does my boss care about me? Uh, am I being recognized and appreciated the way I want to be recognized and appreciated for a job well done? Does my boss ever thank me when I go up and get Am I independent, uh, aka do I have autonomy? Am I free to make my own choices? Is my opinion valued? Fulfillment, am I doing my job for more than just a paycheck? Like, does it actually mean something? That's a big one, man. You wanna motivate people? Help them uncover a purpose. Aspirational coaching, I kind of mentioned that. Um, skilling up, am I mastering the right skills? Am I, am I, challenging? Am I being challenged in the right way? Um, team cohesion, do I, do I feel like I fit into the group? Like, am I part of the team? Do we work well together? Is work fun? Developing, can I move up? We talked about that one. Can I move up in my career? Is the pace I want to move up? Do I feel like I can get promoted or am I stuck? A leader to model after. We all want a leader to model after, my friend. And, and I can quantify or clarify this. The three C's of leadership, all right? Care, do I care about my people? Do, does my boss care about me? Character, do I look up to him as a human being? Do I respect him as a person? Competence, are they good in their role? It's interesting when you look at those, care, character, competence. If you give them the fourth C, coaching, it fulfills all three of those. So if you want to be a better leader, learn to coach. Finally, competition. Is there healthy competition or is it? Well, these are the motivational parts. I'm going to tell you about Steve number two. 